With the rise of natural disasters through the country, it's of no surprise that homeowners are looking for more ways to power their homes during grid failures. Generator backup has been and still is considered the go-to solution for grid resilience. But with the advancements being made to battery technology, it's even more compelling today than it's ever been to get a grid resilient solar system with battery backup. Yes, you can even connect your generator to it if you want the trifecta of grid resilience. But with some of the new battery backup systems coming to market in 2023, you may not actually need that standby generator for too much longer. In this week's video, I'm going to be comparing two battery backup solutions from two major players in the solar industry. The first being our tried and true Enphase system, a product best suited for new customers going solar. But for many of you that already have solar, it's been difficult for us to find a product from a trusted source. Luckily, Canadian Solar has stepped up to the plate with what we believe to be an excellent product. But before I get into the comparing these two battery backup systems, please be sure to use the link down in the description below to request your hassle-free quote from us. We really do make the process of going solar easy because we stay up to date on what it takes to get a project with and without batteries through permitting. There are a lot of changes going on right now to the National Electrical Code and the California Electrical Code, the one we deal with the most. Many of these changes are actually making it harder for companies like ourselves and homeowners in our area to become grid resilient. I'll be doing a more in-depth video on this later this year, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay informed because it's really valuable information. Like I had mentioned, Enphase is ideal for those of you just starting to go solar and you're thinking about adding battery backup. Enphase microinverters paired with Enphase batteries creates an ecosystem of technology unparalleled by the likes of many companies. Not to say Enphase is a perfect system, there are some design constraints to their technology, but compared to their competitors, it's years ahead in terms of technology, safety, and reliability. Now, Enphase only works with Enphase microinverters. So if you have an SMA America converter or a Fronius or ABB, any system, sadly, you're just SOL. But that's where Canadian Solar is looking to be a promising choice because it's universal and can be DC coupled or AC coupled, giving them some unique advantages depending on your configuration. In order for me to compare these systems for you, we have to keep it simple. So so I've devised a handful of key features that help determine which is better based on your situation. Of course, I'll be including pricing in this video, but remember pricing provided is an estimate and is subject to change without notice. If you're interested in these products, then it's in your best interest to request a quote from us by using the link down in the description below. But here's what we're going to be comparing battery output, storage capacity, system scalability, battery chemistry, AC coupled or DC coupled, round trip efficiency, warranties, and finally price. Given both manufacturers have a modular design, we have to look at the starter system and the maximum system to get a fair comparison. Now, each Enphase IQ3 battery can output 1.2 kilowatts at 5.3 amps. You can connect up to 12 of these units together for 15.2 kilowatts of output at 64 amps. Each EP cube system starts at 5 kilowatts and the more batteries you add, the inverter can actually go up to 7.6 kilowatts of output at up to just 32 amps. But this system can actually scale up to a massive 45.6 kilowatts at a whopping 190 amps. That's a freaking ridiculous amount of power. In most situations, most homes have a 200 amp main electrical panel. So the fact that you can get a battery backup system with as much power as your main electrical panel is pretty incredible. Again, Enphase is a bunch of small batteries connected together and each IQ3 unit holds roughly 3.3 kilowatt hours worth of energy. The more the more units you can buy, the more storage you have. When you connect up to 12 units together, which is the max, you'll have roughly 40.4 kilowatt hours of usable energy. Switching to the EP Cube, which also has a modular battery design, but in a tower.
power configuration, the minimum system size is 9.9 .9 kilowatt hours. And each tower can scale up to just about 20 kilowatt hours. I believe it's 19.9 in total. And you can connect up to six full size units together to get 118.8 kilowatt hours of stored energy. In terms of scalability, it's clear that the EP Cube has some massive advantages compared to Enphase, but they both are scalable, so there should be something for everyone. Now, both manufacturers are using lithium iron phosphate, or better known as LFP. This is my favorite battery chemistry because it's the safest, it's the most reliable, and it basically has little to no thermal runaway, making it the safest. They both have passed UL 9540A testing, which is really important going into 2023. Enphase's entire system is AC coupled, from the microinverters to the batteries. So you're going to take a hit in terms of round trip efficiency, which Enphase still manages 89%. EP Cube, on the other hand, can be DC coupled or AC coupled depending on your needs. This gives it a small advantage in its round trip efficiency if you're upgrading your existing string inverter for the EP Cube's hybrid inverter giving you 93.93%. Sadly, Canadian Solar hasn't provided any information on their round trip efficiency as an AC coupled system. So is it better? Is it worse? I just don't know. At the end of the day, you're going to have energy loss regardless of which system you go with, and that's really with any battery backup system. And a four or 5% variance honestly isn't going to make that big of an impact as say the life of the batteries which leads us to the warranties. Remember, these are both LFP batteries, so they really should last 20 plus years before needing to be replaced. With that said, Enphase offers a 10 year, 6,000 cycle warranty, whichever comes first, but Enphase guarantees a minimum battery retention of 70%. Canadian Solar matches this warranty period and the cycles, but instead guarantees 80%. So a little bit more power at year 10 or 6,000 cycles. Now Enphase does offer an extended warranty for $333 per IQ3 battery. That bumps you up to a 15 year warranty. They also bump the cycles and then the percentage is at 60 for battery retention. Deciding which one is truly better is a bit difficult because like I mentioned, these batteries should last 20 plus years before needing to be replaced. And they both have their pros and cons depending on your situation. Now, this leads us to the pricing, which I'm going to split into two scenarios. Retrofits for people with an existing solar system and completely new customers that will be their first solar system with battery backup. I'm going to also be providing a range based on the minimum and the maximum configuration. Everyone's situation is going to be different. So it's in your best interest to use the link down in the description below to request your hassle-free quote from us. Keep in mind, Enphase only works with Enphase microinverters. So if you want their battery backup system to be retrofitted to your existing Enphase system, you have to have either M series microinverters or IQ series microinverters. And furthermore, Enphase actually has some very specific design factors that we have to take into account and follow if you have these more so the M series microinverters, but some of the older IQ series microinverters like the six and the seven. The Canadian Solar EP Cube can be connected to basically any existing solar system rated up to 100 amps AC. It's pretty easy compared to Enphase in regards of retrofit. Now, the entry backup system from Enphase is a retrofit, and it could be as low as $8,569. This is a single IQ3 battery, giving you 3.3 kilowatt hours of storage. You can max out this system with 12 IQ3 batteries, which gives you just over 40 kilowatt hours of storage capacity, and this will cost you around $48,598. The pricing provided here is before the 30% federal tax credit, and any additional cost that may be applicable depending on your financing. That's going to carry out through all the pricing in this video. The entry backup system from the EP Cube, which is a 9.9 .9 kilowatt hour battery, could be retrofitted for as low as $21,316. This is three times the storage capacity and offers a lot more power output in terms of that single IQ3. This is, of course, regardless if you do it as an AC coupled or a DC coupled solution. Now, if you maxed out the system to the mass 
massive 119 kilowatt hours storage capacity, you can actually expect to pay upwards of $191,293. Yeah, I know, it's a lot of money. But again, this is before you factor in the 30% federal investment tax credit and any additional costs that may be applicable depending on your financing. Providing pricing on a new system for both of these configurations was a little tricky since the EP cube can actually support up to a 90 kilowatt DC coupled solar system. So, I mean, you can put a lot of solar panels on this, though I'd recommend staying under or around 60 kilowatts of solar power if you really needed that much, but anyway. What I'm going to do though is compare a 10 panel 4 kilowatt solar system as the minimum and a 48 panel 19.2 kilowatt solar system as the maximum for each of these systems. I kind of feel this is a fair gauge because this is what you would likely purchase if you were going in either of these directions. Starting with a 4 kilowatt in-phase solar system with small battery backup using a single IQ3 battery giving you a 3.3 kilowatt hours of usable storage capacity. This brand, new system will set you back around $22,754. That's the solar panels, the mic converters, the battery backup equipment, and the battery, of course. This is a cash price and is before any additional costs associated with financing for your project. And this price does not take into account that 30% federal investment tax credit. Going to the maximum solar system for Enphase, you'll be getting 12 IQ3 batteries for a whopping 40.4 kilowatt hours of usable storage capacity. Pairing that with four 48 400 watt Q cell solar panels and 48 N phase IQ8M microinverters for 19.2 kilowatts of DC solar power. You could expect to see the price somewhere around $105,000. Again, this is a cash price and is before any financing costs or taking into account that 30% federal investment tax credit. If we switch gears and compare this to the Canadian Solar EP Cube entry battery backup system, which is a 9.9 .9 kilowatt hour system for batteries storage with a four kilowatt solar system keep in mind this is dc coupled using canadian solar modules you could see a price somewhere around thirty two thousand four hundred and fifty two dollars before again taking into account any additional costs associated with financing or that 30 percent federal investment tax credit which helps bring that total cost down doing a comparable system size to Enphase's maximum system capacity using 48 solar panels we're going to be at the same 19.2 kilowatts of dc solar power the Canadian Solar EP Cube will have a 39.6 kilowatt hours of usable storage energy and have a price point around $106,000 before taking into account any additional costs associated with the financing or the 30% federal investment tax credit. Now, just for shits and giggles, if you really wanted to max out the EP Cube with a, say, a 60 kilowatt solar system and 119 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, you'd easily be looking at a price upwards of $300 $336,000. Assuming you could fit 150 400 watt Canadian solar panels on your roof. At the end of the day, we're going to be seeing more and more companies entering the battery space. Some are better than others, but I feel if you're getting a brand new solar system and you're considering battery backup at the same time, then Enphase is probably the best option for you as they have a lower entry cost, a module level monitoring, and ease of expandability for the solar solar and battery equipment. On the other hand, Enphase doesn't really offer a solution for the hundreds of thousands of homeowners that already have an existing solar system that isn't using Enphase microinverters and are just looking to add battery backup, which Canadian Solar looks to be offering a scalable solution that can replace your existing string inverter that may be failing and getting old with a hybrid inverter, or if it's a brand new system, you could go with their AC coupled design. So you have some options here. Either way, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that thumbs up button if you like this video. Of course, if you're someone that lives in our area, Southern California, and you're interested in going solar and getting a quote for either of these products, because we are offering both of them, then visit us online by using that link down in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.